Global Navigation Satellite Systems, short GNSS, are extensively used for a wide range of surveys, including property surveys, topographic mapping, and construction stakeout, as well as for the establishment of high-quality control points that are often used in combination with terrestrial measurements. This lecture begins with a brief overview of the types of signal structures and positioning methods used in global navigation satellite systems. The description of observation techniques and mathematical procedures involved in determining positions from GNSS observations will be kept general, but still detailed enough to understand the adjustment procedures presented. The second part of the lecture describes in which phase of GNSS positioning the method of least squares adjustment is applied, which includes the adjustment of baseline vector components in GNSS networks. Like each adjustment, also an adjustment of GNSS surveys consists of a functional and stochastic model. In the third part of the lecture, the adjustment of a small baseline network will be illustrated both in Excel and in geodetic software. Let us begin with a brief review of the basics of the GNSS signal structure and positioning methods. The term GPS stands for Global Positioning System and refers to the satellite navigation system created by the American military. Several other countries have developed satellite positioning systems similar to GPS as well. These combined systems are known as Global Navigation Satellite Systems. They have in common that their orbiting satellites, whose positions are known, transmit signals which are used by receivers on or near the Earth to determine their locations. As shown in this figure, other prominent satellite positioning systems include the Russian GLONASS, the European Galileo, or the Chinese Beidou-2. Surveys that use global navigation satellite systems involve a variety of coordinate systems. The types of coordinate systems that are commonly used to describe a point position on or near the Earth's surface are shown in this figure. The first coordinate system is a three-dimensional Cartesian coordinate system with x, y and z coordinate axes that are perpendicular to each other and have the same scale. The origin of that coordinate system is at the Earth's gravitational center. The z-axis coincides with the Earth's mean axis of rotation and the equatorial plane, which contains the x and y axis, is perpendicular to it. The x-axis passes through the meridian of Greenwich, which means that the x and y-axis rotate with the Earth. Due to its rotation with the Earth and its origin at the Earth's gravitational center, this coordinate system is called an Earth-centered, Earth-fixed coordinate system, or sometimes also a terrestrial geocentric coordinate system. In order for positional information to be useful to local surveyors, the geocentric x, y, z coordinates need to be converted to geodetic coordinates of latitude, longitude and ellipsoid height, which are symbolized by phi, lambda and h respectively. The ellipsoid and its position relative to the Earth, and therefore also the origin and orientation of coordinate axis in the Earth-centered Earth-fixed coordinate system, is defined through the geodetic datum, which in the case of GPS is WGS84. Geocentric x, y, z coordinates can be converted to geodetic coordinates and the other way around through mathematical equations. For example, consider point P with a latitude of 45 degrees, a longitude of 40 degrees and an ellipsoidal height of 1000 meters. Using the WGS84 related ellipsoid parameters, the corresponding Earth centered, Earth fixed coordinates can be found. The positive Y coordinate implies that the point is located on the Eastern Hemisphere, and the positive Z coordinate implies that the point 
is located on the northern hemisphere. Global navigation satellite systems operate by determining distances between ground stations of unknown locations and orbiting GNSS satellites with known positions. Distances are determined by taking different types of observations on transmitted satellite signals, which include code measurements and carrier phase measurements. The carrier wave transmitted by a satellite has several characteristics, such as phase, amplitude or frequency. Any of these can be changed to carry code information. Therefore, GNSS signal codes are modulated onto electromagnetic carrier waves. The figure illustrates this principle. The top curve shows the high frequency carrier wave, the middle one shows the signal expressed as a binary plus one minus one code and the bottom one shows the modulated carrier which contains the code information. As can be seen, the wavelength of the carrier is shorter than that of the code that is modulated onto it. This means that the use of carrier phase information can lead to finding a more precise distance between receiver and satellite than code observations alone. This in turn leads to more precise positioning. This approach, however, requires long observation periods and more complex solution methods. The accuracy of distances obtained through code measurements, the so-called code range or pseudo range, is at the meter level. Since code-based signals contain information about their transmission time from the satellite, the signal travel time can be obtained by reading this information upon the signal arrival at the receiver. This means that code ranges are virtually unambiguous, which makes them immune to signal interruptions and suitable for navigation purposes. Code ranges can be used by a single receiver to obtain a position with an absolute accuracy of a few meters using single point positioning. Besides this, various analysis methods have been developed which allow to improve the relative position accuracy through the simultaneous use of several receivers that work with code ranges. The analysis method which uses the carrier phase of the signal is called carrier phase ranging and reaches up to millimeter accuracy. This method measures the fractional difference in phase between the carrier signal received from the satellite and an internally generated reference carrier signal. The phases from both signals will change relative to each other since the distance between the satellite and receiver varies continuously, leading to a Doppler shifted frequency of the received signal. This phase measurement procedure is conducted simultaneously on at least two different receivers. After applying a scheme of differencing techniques, which involves computing differences between phase observations from different receivers and satellites, vector distances, or so-called baselines, can be determined between the different receivers. Related to the different GNSS signal types, a distinction can be made between three types of positioning methods. The first method is point positioning, which is also known as absolute positioning or single point positioning. Point positioning uses a single receiver and determines distances between satellites and the receiver, the so-called code pseudo ranges, through pseudo random noise codes that are modulated onto the carrier. The solution to the three unknown receiver coordinates can be found by trilateration in space, that is by intersecting of three spheres centered at three satellites. Due to the receiver clock error, a fourth pseudo range needs to be observed to find a 3D point position. Differential positioning is a real-time positioning technique where two or more receivers are used. One stationary reference or base receiver is located at a known point and the position of the moving remote receiver is to be determined. The reference station computes pseudo range corrections at the reference site and transmits them to the rover in real time. The remote receiver applies these corrections to the measured pseudo ranges and performs point positioning with the correct pseudo ranges. Differential positioning can be conducted with code and phase pseudo ranges. Relative positioning involves the simultaneous measurement of signals from the same satellites at two receivers, 
which are directly combined. The vector between the pair of receivers is known as baseline. Highest accuracies up to the order of a centimeter or better can be achieved in the relative positioning mode with observed carrier phases. This lecture will examine the adjustment of static GNSS networks where baselines were determined through relative positioning. To remove different types of errors in determining the baseline between two receivers, a method called differencing needs to be applied. Assuming simultaneous observations at two receivers A and B, two satellites K and J, linear combinations of phase equations can be formed. This results in single, double and triple differences. Single differencing is achieved by observing a single satellite simultaneously from two receivers, such as satellite K from point A and B. Double differencing subtracts the results of single differences at two receivers one from another. Triple differencing consists of differencing the results of two double differences for two different times. Triple differencing is a common method to handle signal dropouts. A baseline solution between two receivers can be computed from double differences formed at the same time epoch. In practice, four or more satellites are observed simultaneously at multiple receivers, producing a very large number of redundant observations from which many different combinations can be computed. A least squares adjustment of GNSS carrier phase observations consists of two stages. In the first step, the large number of redundant carrier phase observations is adjusted to obtain the most probable delta x, delta y, and delta z components of the baseline vectors. The development of these observations and their resolution through least squares is not within the scope of this lecture. Instead, we rely on output from software provided by manufacturers of GNSS receivers. In addition to the baseline components, the software will also output the variance covariance matrix for each baseline, which describes the precision of each vector component as well as the correlation between the different components. The baseline vector between two stations is typically expressed in geocentric x, y, z coordinates shown as delta x, delta y and delta z in this figure. To compute the coordinates of unknown stations through baselines, baselines must first be tied to a control station. In this figure, if we assume that station P1 is a control and station P2 is an unknown point, coordinates of station P1 need to be known in geocentric x, y, z coordinates to compute the coordinates of P2. The second stage of the analysis is the adjustment of baseline vectors. It uses baseline component information from the previous step. The goal of this step is to make all coordinate differences obtained from baselines consistent throughout the network of stations. As an example, consider the GNSS network shown in this figure. Stations A and B are control stations, whereas the positions of stations C and D are unknown. In this example, the adjusted X coordinate of station C should be obtained by adding the delta X AC baseline component to the X coordinate of station A. The same value should be obtained by adding the delta X BC component to the X coordinate of station B. Equivalent conditions exist for the Y and Z coordinates. 